guys, welcome to the channel. I'm the DIY guy and today we're going to be taking a look at different types of wire connectors. We're going to dive a little bit into how those wire connectors work and which ones you should use for different applications. If you like this sort of content, please click on the subscribe button down below. That helps me out massively and make sure you give me a like because it helps this video reach more viewers and help more people on YouTube. So please hit the like button. Right, let's start looking at some connectors. Okay, so the first and most common wire connector you'll see is the terminal strip or some people call it the chocolate block. Now at some point in your DIY journey it's likely that you've used or come across these and they're very cheap and readily available. And actually that's our first pro with the terminal strip. It is very cheap and very readily available. These can actually be snapped off like so. They're very easy to use. All you need to do is grab a screwdriver, undo the little screw and you'll see inside how they work. You undo that screw, you'll put your wire inside the terminal strip and do up the screw again. So the main pros with the terminal strips are the price, readily available and can be cut to size so they're good to just keep one solution in your tool bag at any one time. There is one other key pro with the terminal strip that you won't get with some of the other solutions and that is thinner gauge or stranded wire. Now with stranded wire some of the push fit connectors you'll struggle to actually push them in due to the resistance of the push fit. However with terminal strips it's easy to just do them up with the screw with very little resistance. So stranded wires, terminal strips are actually a really good way to get a good contact. As for the negative points of the terminal strip, firstly, if you're doing a lot of connections, they can take a lot longer to use. The second con with the terminal strip, they're more difficult to use in confined spaces because you've got to find room to get your screwdriver in there as well. The biggest con, however, with the terminal strip is simply that sometimes a good connection is not always made. The reason for that is the wire can actually run alongside the screw inside the body of the connector and what can happen is it can actually miss and fall out of the terminal strip. Right so let's move on to the push fit connectors. So the most popular brands for these are Wago and Ideal. With Wago they're colour coded so we have a six wire connector, an eight wire connector, a two wire connector and a four wire connector and they're all colour coded. That makes it very easy to buy a multi-pack and I'll put a link in the description where you can get them. Now we'll use the four wire connector for the example and the first pro to these and why I think they may be simply the best solution for a DIYer is that they're very very fast to use. So I'll show you how we connect a few wires together. We simply push the core in and because they're clear bodied you can actually see that that conductor has gone all the way to the end so that we have a good connection. I mean I'm giving that some force and I cannot pull that wire out. So quite simply we can push a few and you can see how neat of a job we can actually make of it. If we just push three in there for now, look how quick that is to connect three wires together compared to the terminal strip. And the key is if you're a DIYer and you're not doing this every day, you have a visual confirmation, if you like, that those conductors are fully seated within that connector. Now if we do that with a few of these, you'll just see how quick and easy it is to use the push fit system. Okay, so you can see how quick and easy it is to join lots of wires together and have a very good visual confirmation that the job is done safely and securely. Another great pro with the push fits is that they can be used very easily in a confined space. So what cons do we have with the push fit connector? Well there is really only one or two. Where larger gauge wire is very easy to push against the resistance of the connector, a stranded wire or a low gauge wire that's very easy to bend actually is very very difficult to push into the connector. So if you see here, if I push that, I can't actually physically push against the resistance and I don't get a good connection. And it's the same with a low gauge wire. Sometimes if you've got a one mil wire that you're using for lighting or something like that, you will simply struggle to push it into the push fit connector. And the final con really is the price. They are reasonably expensive and you'll need to consider that if you're doing a lot of work with these, they're going to cost you a considerable amount more money 
than what the terminal strip will. So let's move on to the lever connector made by Wago. Again, they come in different sizes dependent on how many wires you want to connect together. So for the DIYer, the opportunity for error is almost completely eliminated. These are the 222 versions, but you can get the 221, and they have the transparent body just like the push fits. These ones don't have the transparent body, but they're still very, very easy to use, and you can actually get a very good feeling of whether that wire is seated properly. Let me demonstrate this for you on a wire head. Pull that lever up on the connector push the wire in place and you'll feel that there's no resistance so if you look they're going in all the way to the back of the connector and there's absolutely no resistance push the lever down again very easy and very quick look how hard I can actually pull that you wouldn't believe how strong these things are so let's put a couple of wires in there and time is without a doubt money. These being the quickest solution out there certainly is very very helpful. And you can see just how strong those are. Strong, neat and reliable. Those are probably the best connectors for me out there on the market. There is one more reason why they stand out above the rest and that is low gauge light and wire or stranded wire like this. With lever connectors stranded wire presents no challenge I mean that is really secure. The 222 or the 221 lever connector is the best thing to connect stranded wire. There's one more great thing about the lever connectors and that is that they can be undone and removed very easily. Now that means there is a lot less waste should you make a mistake. Now there are cons to these like with anything and that is that they probably are the most expensive option out there on the market and they will cost you a considerable amount more to use. So let's talk about the final piece of the puzzle the Wago box junction box and I'll tell you why I really like using these especially on jobs where you're connecting multiple wires in amongst things like insulation in lofts if you're doing spotlights and things like that. Why are they great? Again there'll be a link in the description. They're really good, they're very quick to use so they can hold multiple wires in really really securely and actually they're very very cheap. They're less than a few pounds and they're a lot easier to use than a conventional junction box and they work in tandem with all the Wago connectors whether it be the 221 and the 222 lever connectors or the Wago push fit connectors like we have here. All you have to do is place your connectors down in this end section here, like so, very easy. And all of your wires push down and are gripped in the claws at the end of the box so that they can't actually be pulled out or exposed very easily at all. And all we then need to do is just close the top of our box. It's such a secure and neat solution. It can be fixed to the wall and it can be accessed and opened up easily as well. And they're so small and can fit in pretty much any space. That for me is the cherry on top to the Wago range. All of the connectors I've mentioned in the video come in handy little kits from Ideal and Wago. Really handy little kits if you want to leave them in your tool bag should you not know what connectors you're going to use on a day to day basis. Right guys, that's all the connectors. Drop me a comment down below and let me know which ones you think are the best. And don't forget to like the video because that helps this video reach and help more people on YouTube. And don't forget I'll link all of the connectors down below so that you can go and grab yourself a box of these and give them a go for yourself. And don't forget to hit one of these little boxes on the screen here where you'll be able to find some of my electrical videos on the channel amongst many other things that I do here like plumbing and things like that so make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss out on any of my other videos because there's some great great content that will help you DIYers out going forward. I'm the DIY guy and I'll see you guys in the next one.